Welcome to part three in our four-part series on how to accurately measure nanosecond scale networks. I'm Dr. Matthew Grosvenor, and I'm speaking on behalf of the team at Exablaze. In this part, we're going to look at how not to accurately measure nanosecond scale networks and some of the traps and gotchas that we find along the way. Previously, we looked at how to quantify the accuracy of network measurement devices, and we introduced the Exnic HPT, which was the highest and best performing network measurement device. So let's get started then. On this slide, I have a diagram of how you would usually do this sort of network measurement. We have a system under test, which is the red box there. We have a source of packets going into an optical splitter, a second optical splitter, and a destination. And both of those optical splitters send packets into a capture device, which is what we're using for doing our measurements. Now let's assume for the sake of argument that all of the fibers are exactly the same length in this setup. So what would happen is our packet would leave the source and arrive at the optical splitter, and then two copies, one would be sent to the a system under test, and one would get sent to the capture device, and they would both arrive at precisely the same time. The device would then take some amount of latency before a packet would be emitted out of it, and this would ar again arrive at an optical splitter, a copy would be sent to the capture device, and a copy would be sent to the destination. Now to figure out what the final value is, what we'd have to do is compensate for any delays that occur along that path, the path from exit of the system under the test uh, until the packets arrive at the capture device. So this should be fairly straightforward. We can calculate delay by understanding the propagation speed of the signal and understanding the length of the cable. So how do we figure out what the propagation speed is? Or phrased quite another way, how do we figure out what the speed of light is? Obviously to do that what we need to do is figure out what medium we're going to be working in and the most natural one is to work with fibers. So what we did was we bought a collection of fibers of varying different lengths uh, in fairly small increments from 0.2 meters up to 5.5 meters and in increments of 0.25 meters to 0.5 meters and we bought 18 of them in total so a fairly large number of samples. We then measured them very accurately for their length and ran our HPT network card to capture the delay that we saw of packets going around these fibers and plotted the following curve. With this curve we can form a linear interpolation and we can also see what the quality of fit of that interpolation is and you can see here it's actually pretty good. We've got about five nines there worth of correlation uh, and we have this very interesting looking equation. The gradient of that equation which you can see here is 4.91 describes how the delay increases as the length increases, which is our propagation delay. So we can see here that the V-prop in a fiber is 4.91 nanoseconds per meter. The other interesting thing to see here is the Y-intercept, which you see there is an offset of 34.03 nanoseconds. Uh, and this is a representation of sort of internal delays within the measurement and the network device itself. And this will become um, apparent in, in a minute why this is interesting and important. The other question, of course, is to use copper. And so we did very much the same thing. We purchased a collection of direct-attached copper cables, uh, again, in lengths of between half a quarter of a meter and 12 meters, in fairly small increments, once again, uh, in both gauges of uh, AWG24 and AWG30, uh, and again, quite a large number, in this case, 25. So again, we can do the same sort of trick. We run the same experiment and plot the same curve. Again, we can do a linear fit and we can also look at the quality of that fit and again the quality of the fit is very good. So if we extract those values and sort of summarize them you can see here the the gradients and the intercepts are sort of split out and you can see fiber has a propagation delay of 4.91 nanoseconds per meter and the copper has a delay of 5.03 nanoseconds per meter. What's interesting here is those y-intercepts are both different the fiber has an offset of 34.03 nanoseconds and the copper has an offset of 33.2. The reason for this is that when you send a packet through the fiber it has to go through an SFP module and this adds a constant delay offset. If we calculate the difference between those two delay offsets we get the SFP cost which is actually a very interesting and useful value to have. Here we're estimating it at about 830 picoseconds which is fairly close to what we'd expect the value to be. The other interesting thing to see here is that the copper is actually slower. Now that's not exactly what we'd expect to see if we were doing this experiment sort of from first principles. So 
it's interesting to see that there's something else going on there. And I'm going to write that up as one of our gotchas of this kind of measurement, which is gotcha number four, and copper isn't faster than fiber. Now, so far, we've only looked at AWG 30. So we'll also look at the AWG 24 results and again, apply the same sort of experiment. There's something very interesting that happens when we did this experiment, which is we see that there's only uh, three nines worth of correlation in that line. That's a little bit strange. Um, th the other thing that we see is that the y-intercepts don't actually match. So something a bit odd sort of going on here. Now, you may have noticed it just by looking at the slide, but if we zoom in a little bit, there's a bit of an odd point happening somewhere, and it's a bit hard to tell really what's going on. So I broke out the values here into this table, and if we look at the average delay per meter, you can see that there's a standout here on the three meter value. So we wondered what could possibly be going wrong with this cable, and so we did a little bit of investigation. The first thought we had was perhaps that it was an active cable of some sort, that there was some sort of delay-inducing components. And so we cracked open the cable and had a look inside the end connectors, uh, and we couldn't find any sort of components that would be delaying the signals through it. So the other thought we had was perhaps we'd measured the length wrong, and that we were actually measuring a different cable length than we thought. So we remeasured the cable, and we were only about a millimeter out in our, in our remeasurement. So that didn't seem to be the problem either. And the final question we had was perhaps our data was wrong. You know, perhaps we had just needed to recollect the experimental data. So we ran the entire experiment all over again, and we got precisely the same result. So the question sort of remains, what is the, the uh, cause of this delay and this data point being bad? And after some investigation, we realized that this particular cable that we were using for the measurement was different to all of the other cables. Uh, it had a specific manufacturer, and that specific manufacturer was different to all of the other cables that we were using. Now, I'm not going to tell you which manufacturer we now use, but I will say that we now uh, supply our own cables that are Exablaze branded and that are guaranteed to be the faster type. So if we remove that bad data point, uh, the curves start to look a lot more sensible, the correlation goes up, and the values all become what we'd expect. And interestingly, we now get a, quite a nice looking ranking here of, of fiber and copper delays. You can see that as we expect, the AWG24 cable is actually the fastest one. They're at 4.19 nanoseconds per meter. Uh, and these uh, odd slow type of cables, which happen to be sharing the same manufacturer, are the ones that are at the bottom there at 5.03. So if we remember back to gotcha number four, that uh, copper isn't faster than fiber, it's actually not quite true. Uh, what we've discovered is gotcha number 4b, that is copper isn't always faster than fiber, and it very much depends on which copper you use. Now I'm actually going to rephrase that, and I'm going to call that tip number 4, and that is to say that copper isn't always faster than fiber unless you get your copper cables that are certified from Exablaze. So moving forwards now, we remembering our experimental setup where we're trying to calculate the delay, we have this value that we wanted, which is the propagation delay. If we were using fibers, we could call that 4.91 nanoseconds per meter. The second value that we need now is to figure out what the length is. So there's a little bit of a problem here as well. If we were to measure the length and say it was 1.0 meters at 4.91 nanoseconds per meter, that would be a delay of 4.91 nanoseconds. But what if we were ever so slightly wrong? What if the real value was 1.1 meters? Well, now we've got a 5.4 nanosecond delay, which is a 500 picosecond difference in our measurement. So quite a substantial difference there. And similarly, if we got it just a little bit wrong and called it 1.11 meters, there would be 550 picosecond delay. So fairly substantial delays in the scale of picoseconds can be attributed to getting our lengths just not quite right. And so this brings me now to gotcha number five, which is that one meter isn't exactly the same as 1.00 meters. And so looking at this sort of measurement methodology, we're now in a bit of a difficult place. We have this uh, propagation delay that we have to get just so right, and it has to depend on the particular type of copper or fiber that we're using. And we also have to get these lengths, and we have to measure them just right so that we don't incur extra delays or errors in our measurement as a result. And this obviously is not the right way to do this sort of measurement. And that's where I'm going to conclude now from part three, which is how not to do high precision network measurements. Please join me in part four, where I'll be talking about our methodology for doing picosecond scale accurate measurements on nanosecond scale networks.